Hey guys, Spudknocker here, and welcome back to DCS World. Today I figured we'd hop in and talk about the brand new sea search mode of the air-to-ground radar in the F-A-18C Hornet, and how to use it in conjunction with the AGM-84D Harpoon anti-ship cruise missile. We will also discuss why this type of weapon is so dangerous and requires such extreme caution when employing it in both real life and in DCS world as we go through some historical examples of incidents around the world caused by anti-ship cruise missiles. But before we hop into the cockpit, let's talk for a moment about our sponsor, Leading Edge Supplements, and their Cognitive and Energy Enhancer Severe Clear. It is a product made by pilots and for pilots to help foster concentration and attention span in both the real cockpit and the virtual one. I really love this product and it's the only reason I'm even talking about it. It really helps me get through three to four flights a day and then be able to get home and make awesome DCS World content for you guys. So please use code SPUD, S-P-U-D, for 15% off of your order, guys. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the office of the F-A-18C Hornet on a bright and early morning over the beautiful blue Persian Gulf. And we'll go ahead and get right into talking about the brand new sea search mode for the air-to-ground radar of the F-A-18C and how to use it in conjunction with your AGM-84D Harpoon anti-ship cruise missiles. Now as I alluded to earlier in the intro to this video, Anti-ship cruise missiles in the AGM-84D specifically are probably the most dangerous weapons available in the arsenals of any jet in DCS World. There are a number of reasons why the Harpoon and anti-ship cruise missiles in general are some of the most dangerous weapons around, but the biggest one definitely is the fact that it is a lot like firing a Pitbull AMRAAM into a furball. You don't know whether it's going to lock on and track a friendly aircraft, a bandit, or maybe just a passing civilian airliner. As a result, there have been many historical instances where anti-ship cruise missiles have caused international incidences and mass casualty events. Some examples of this would be the USS Stark being hit by an Exocet anti-ship cruise missile fired by a Dassault Falcon 50 modified by the French and the Iraqis to fire Exocet anti-ship cruise missiles, as well as numerous Kuwaiti and Iranian tankers, and as well as other nations' tankers falling prey to Mirage F-1 EQs and Super E-10 Dards launching Exocet cruise missiles in the Persian Gulf throughout the tanker war portion of the Iran-Iraq War. Another instance, of course, is the sinking of the Atlantic Conveyor by yet another Exocet anti-ship cruise missile that was decoyed away from Royal Navy destroyers in an attempt to sink them fired from another Super E-10 Dart by the Argentine Navy. Now, another incident that did occur rather recently, in fact, was the Republic of China Navy accidentally fired a Harpoon sea-launched anti-ship missile and destroyed a Chinese fishing vessel, killing all members on board. So as a result, we have to be very, very careful when we employ this type of weapon, and I highly recommend working with a human-controlled GCI, JSTAR, or ATC type of function within your missions to ensure you're not going to hit either a civilian ship, a friendly ship, or ensure that you can hit the actual target you're going after. Like I said earlier, these weapons are not very accurate, but they're highly precise. They will not hit what you're aiming for, but they will definitely hit whatever it locks onto. So just keep that in mind as we go through this tutorial. So first thing we're going to do as we approach our target waypoint, which will be waypoint one, we've got a couple ships out there at waypoint one to kind of emphasize um, my point about these weapons not being super accurate, but very precise. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go master arm on and we'll go into air to ground mode. Now to change your air to ground radar modes, it's very, very simple. From the map mode, we just want to press this top left OSB button until we get to the C function right here. And we'll go ahead and push our range up to 80 nautical miles. And we can start to see a couple radar blips out here in front of us. And as we get closer to these radar blips, we'll go ahead and set up our harpoon by simply just clicking on it. And we'll set our mode to bearing and range once we get a lock on with our sea search radar. 
So as always, we're gonna go sensors control switch right to ensure that we have the diamond in the top right of our right hand DDI in order to assign our TDC to the correct sensor to move it around. And in order to actually lock up a ship contact that we have on our radar, they always show up as small bricks, just like a, say, a RWS contact in an air-to-air -air radar. And to lock them up, depressing the TDC does not do it. It simply puts that point as a target point on the ground out there in front of us. For instance, when we get this little X on our sea search radar, that is the point that the aircraft is going to be dropping weapons on or say slaving the lightning targeting pod that we have on our left uh, cheek station on as well. So we're gonna go ahead and deselect that point by going the nose wheel steering switch on the stick. And instead to actually lock up one of these contacts, which is a little bit different, we're gonna go sensor control switch right again. And we can see we can only lock up one contact at a time. It's very much similar to, say, a RWS hard lock, like for firing a sparrow at a um, air target. To unlock it, we can simply go sensor select switch right again. And we've got a few different ships out here. And we'll go ahead and scroll through these different contacts and show you guys how to identify the proper ship you actually want to hit. So we'll look at the F-10 map here, and we'll look out at these ships near Kish Island, and we can see we've got some neutral freighters. One of the new freighters that was recently introduced to DCS World. Very cool, the Handy Wind, which is an interesting uh, name for a ship. And if we go back to the F-10 map, we can also see that we have a Grisha frigate out here. And that's gonna, of course, be our target. If we look at the F-10 map again, we can see some small fast boats in a small group here going rather fast. And if we look at the speeds of these ships, they're all going in a more or less same heading. But if we look at the speeds of these ships, we can see the small boats are at about 49-ish, 50 knots. The freighters are about 12 knots and the frigates at 24 knots. So that's how we're essentially going to be uh, selecting and finding the proper target to engage, of course, this Grisha frigate. Now you can get this information from say a human GCI in lot ATC who can tell you where the target is and its approximate speed and heading. And so all you gotta do here is go in and lock up a couple of these targets. Let's say this looks like a big clunk, uh, chunk of targets here. So we'll go ahead and lock up one of these guys. And we can see he's at a heading of 137 degrees for 50 knots. And that of course is going to be the speed of one of those little tiny uh, boats and we're definitely not going to waste a harpoon on one of those guys and I don't think a harpoon would even track on one. So we'll go ahead and go sensor select switch right again and let's try another ship. Go sensor select switch right again and we can see this ship is at 12 knots at a heading of 125 degrees. So we already know in the area that uh, these freighters are traveling at a speed of 12 knots so we're going to be very careful not to engage any civilian shipping in the area at 12 knots. Another ship at 12 knots for heading of 112 degrees. And we'll just go ahead and identify this last cargo ship out here, 12 knots again, 121 degrees. So our Grisha must be this guy right here in the middle. 24 knots for 111 degrees. That is definitely going to be our bad guy ship that we're going to want to engage with our harpoon missiles. Now here is something to keep in mind here. The setup of these ships that we can see on our sea search radar, as well as on our radar page there and on the F-10 map, we can see this is gonna be a very dangerous engagement for Harpoon anti-ship cruise missiles. The Harpoons could very easily veer off course and activate their radar and lock on to one of these cargo ships off to the right-hand side and to the left-hand side of this frigate or it could fly over the top of the frigate, completely miss the frigate itself, and target this cargo ship behind it. Very unlikely that one of the Harpoon missiles would veer off course so far to actually target one of these small boats, and the radar inside the nose cone of a AGM-84 is not going to be sensitive to pick up one of these guys either. So let's go ahead and head into the cockpit, and let's talk about how we're going to mitigate this issue. And like I said earlier, it's incredibly important to know exactly where your target is, exactly what the picture of the target is looking like to ensure that we're hopefully gonna give them harpoon the best chance possible of hitting a uh, the correct target and not say a innocent bystander like these cargo ships. 
So we're going to go ahead and put the mode of our harpoon into uh, range and bearing mode. Our flight altitude, we're going to keep at a medium altitude for now. So we have, of course, the settings high, medium, and low that we can choose from and cycle through with the FLT OSB button here. And what that's going to do is it's going to have your missile fly at an altitude out towards its target area at either 15,000 feet MSL, 10,000 feet MSL, or 5,000 feet MSL. Your Missile will fly at a faster airspeed and faster ground speed the higher you have it fly. However, the Harpoon's radar is not sensitive enough to pick up small ships like that Grisha with a high flight um, profile. And of course, we can select our terminal flight profile of pop-up and skim. Again, this uh, option can be a little bit dangerous when engaging smaller targets like this Grisha because if the weapon does pop up it sometimes can lose track of a small target like a Grisha, fly right over the top of it and engage a friendly cargo ship or a neutral cargo ship in this instance. So we have to be very very careful with that. Next we can also use the seek OSB button to seek out a small target, a medium target, or a large target. Now some people will kind of default to thinking that the small option is going to be, say, for one of those small, fast uh, uh, gunboats that we just saw on the F-10 map and on our radar display. However, the small section is going to be for targets that are the size of a Grisha, not the size of one of those little gunboats that was speeding along at roughly about 50 knots. So keep that in mind as well. A medium-sized ship is going to be something along the lines of our handy wind uh, dry bulk cargo ship here. So something to be very cognizant of. Whereas like a large is going to be like say a um, Admiral Kuznetsov class carrier or a Nimitz class carrier, something of that nature, a very large ship. So keep that in mind when it comes to actually trying to target the correct ship. So because we know we're going after a Grisha here, we're gonna have our flight profile. We're gonna have the weapons fly out at medium altitude with our terminal guidance going to be skim, and we're gonna seek a small target here. I also am going to steer the aircraft to the right-hand side of our target here and bring the azimuth of our jet and the flight path of our missiles a little bit to the um, east side of this target here. The reason why is, of course, it takes a little bit of time for our missile to fly out the distance to the target, activate its radar, and hopefully find its target. Like I said, our big goal here is to give the we weapon the best chance possible of hitting the correct ship. So we'll go ahead and unpause and we'll start launching some missiles here and we'll see what happens. I've run this particular test with these particular formation of ships multiple times with different fr flight profiles and different uh, terminal guidance profiles and each result is almost different the entire time. Sometimes the missiles will hit the same ship. Sometimes one missile will hit one ship and another missile will hit the other ship. Sometimes they'll totally ignore the Grisha and just go after cargo ships. And sometimes it'll only go after the Grisha. So you have to be incredibly careful when using these weapons. And it really shows just how dangerous and just how unpredictable this type of weapon is. Very similar, like I said earlier, to launching an Amram and Pitbull into a furball of both friendly and enemy aircraft out in front of you. Also keep in mind that the AGM-84 Harpoon is an air-breathing cruise missile. Flying at a very high airspeed at a very high altitude is not necessarily going to help your missile fly a further distance at a higher airspeed. The missile will automatically slow itself down to its own cruise airspeed that is set for the proper altitude it's going to be at. So there's really no reason to, you know, kind of uh, go for the moon like you would when firing an AMRAAM or a HARM at a target. So let's go ahead and make sure we've got everything set to go. Radar and bearing, flight profile medium, term, uh, terminal guidance is going to be skim. Seek, we're going to be seeking that small Grisha. So we'll go ahead. And fire the missile. Mode, medium, skim, seeking, small. And we'll go ahead and... fire off that second vampire. And so we're gonna go ahead and roll the jet to the right and we'll just go ahead and pop on the autopilot here just so that way we can watch our missiles fly out to their targets here. And we can see that these missiles are already reaching their terminal airspeed. 
They're not going to fly any faster and they're not going to fly any slower. These are air breathing missiles with a small jet engine inside them. So we go ahead and watch these guys fly out to their target areas. Hopefully we will get a good result and hit that Grisha. I've noticed that when the harpoon is flying that high profile out to its target, it's not sensitive enough to pick up a small ship like the Grisha. However, it will pick up those large cargo ships. So we just gotta be very careful with how we're employing this weapon, as I've said multiple times now. So we'll go ahead and speed things up a little bit here. And we can see the airspeed of the missile very, very steady the entire time. And it looks like I did not lead the target enough. Hopefully we're not gonna see a problem when it comes to engaging this target. And hopefully we don't hit a neutral ship out here. And they should be turning on their radars momentarily. And we can see, once again, these missiles have completely whiffed on the Grisha and they are flying towards a neutral cargo ship. Not completely unexpected, but definitely something to look out for. And we can see it's definitely going to go for this handy wind here. It completely missed the Grisha. And this should be a more or less fatal hit for this handy wind cargo ship. And two hits on a neutral cargo ship that had nothing to do with the air war over the Persian Gulf. And we can see this handy wind is definitely dead in the water. She is definitely out of service for good. And so this is a very good illustration as to why these types of weapons are incredibly unpredictable and incredibly uh, dangerous when it comes to employing them correctly or incorrectly. And we can see it's a, another great representation of why the Iraqis could cause so much havoc launching exosets all over the Persian Gulf during the 1980s, during the tanker war portion of the Iran-Iraq war, and why it caused so much economic havoc on the Kuwaitis, Saudis, as well as the Iranians, of course. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I was hoping personally that we would get at least one hit on that Grisha, but it does show you guys how, you know, uh, critical it is to be extremely precise with this weapon system. And when you do have neutral shipping around, um, around enemy shipping, you really just want to be really careful, maybe even think twice about employing that harpoon until you can see that that enemy ship has separated out away from some of that uh, friendly or neutral shipping. As well as it really shows you guys that if you were firing at a task force flying in close proximity, there really is no way to pinpoint one of those ships in that task force. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give us a like and a subscribe, and uh, Stay safe out there, guys, as always, and uh, fly safe as well. So thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one.